The world of fertility can seem intimidating and confusing. So today let's talk about some interesting fertility terms, Dr. Liz. So mm. tell me, what is tube flushing? <laughs> it sounds like, you know, something that you do. Yeah. yeah. There's a, well, tubal flushing is a really a tubal patency study and there's three different ways we can do that. The first, uh, which we don't do as much anymore, is an x-ray where you present to the x-ray department and an injection of dye is put into the tube which is uh, able to be seen on an x-ray and after it's flushed an x-ray snap shows if the dye has come out the ends of the tube. Another way that we do it is with an ultrasound scan and under ultrasound scanning again a little dye is injected just beyond the level of the cervix and into the tubes and we watch it spill, we watch the dye spill. Uh, and then a final way that we um, do a tubal study is to do it at the time of an operation where we inject some blue dye and we watch it come out the ends of the tube. And the reason for that is trying to figure out the reasons behind why somebody hasn't fallen pregnant. So to fall pregnant, you need the egg and the sperm to meet and mm. that happens in the tube. Yeah. So the tube can be blocked. So it can be blocked. to find out if it's yeah. blocked or not. Yeah, but also it, um, there is evidence that it will improve your fertility, like natural fertility, for three up to six months after oh, a, flush. a flush. Mm. Oh, so, so it's a diagnostic procedure that um, can provide uh, assistance um, in just the investigation itself and helping fall pregnant. Awesome. Hmm. So yeah. then what is super ovulation? <laughs> super That's ovulation. It. it sounds like it's a whole like little like <laughs> yeah. legs going, woohoo, it's super ovulation time. <laughs> so um, in somebody that is ovulating, um, the sometimes if they're not falling pregnant, we can give a little bit of a medication to possibly instead of producing one egg in a follicle each month, um, we let through a couple. So at a very short burst at the very start of the menstrual cycle we have the patient take a couple of we have the patient take some medication and then we closely monitor um, with bloods and ultrasound scans to see how many follicles develop and so long as it's not three four five which you could fall pregnant with a high order oh, multiple birth awesome. um, there is a risk of a multiple gestation with the superovulation but what we do is we, we track it along and just hopefully with uh, the month presenting with two eggs to fall pregnant, it increases your probability of conception, but it needs to be very um, closely monitored in order to prevent those high order multiple yeah, births. Any octo, octo mum? No, <laughs> well, some people, but some I would do, but strongly yeah. advise against it. Oh look, I think having eight children at once would be amazing. Blink, blink. <laughs> so what is in utero insemination then? Yeah, so this is the term used in Australia. America, they like the term artificial insemination. Okay. But, uh, what we do there is... It sounds so artificial. <laughs> so there's, um, there are some factors that we, we know a bit about um, that may be contributors to subfertility. So hostility of the cervix, maybe one, or sometimes there's antibodies in sperm and uh, the artificial insemination or in utero insemination um, the partner provides a sample and that sample is uh, washed and spun down to a super concentrated form and super sperm <laughs> super sperm and timed very closely with a, uh, a woman's uh, menstrual cycle with the hormones and the ultrasound scan with or without super ovulation um, the in utero insemination occurs, so it's done um, in doctor's rooms or in a hospital and uh, it's a fairly comfortable procedure, you're awake during it and after the insemination occurs uh, you then have a series of uh, blood tests afterwards and then finally a couple of weeks later a pregnancy test as well. The super, the super ovulation and super sperm, I love it. <laughs> so, how, do you, how do you help with um, endometriosis then when it comes to fertility? Yeah, so fertility with endometriosis, we have a couple of management options available. Um, if it is strongly suspicious that you have endometriosis, if you're seeking fertility assistance and you haven't naturally conceived, sometimes we consider treating that. Um, treatment often involves doing surgery um, and that surgery is usually keyhole and we excise it so we actually visualize the endometriosis and that's removed. Um, also sometimes uh, a gynecologist may elect to uh, burn little deposits of endometriosis it depends a bit on the anatomical location and a few other factors as well. Uh, to make the decision to proceed with endometriosis treatment though you need to take that into consideration with all of the fertility factors and uh, we 
may uh, sometimes elect to not surgically treat endometriosis, but it, there's, a, there's many, many variables there. So yeah, you see your gynaecologist or your fertility specialist gynaecologist and um, the decisions made taking into account all the different Everything. factors, yeah. yeah. Incredible. <laughs> so if you, you know, are considering IVF um, or fertility treatment uh, and you have any questions, you need to talk to an expert like Dr Liz so she can help you out and calm any nerves you may have. She's incredible, isn't she? She knows all of the answers. <laughs>